So you can see if I press and hold this side of the button, I am adjusting the audio volume up and down. If I press the upper edge, then you usually do it in, in larger steps, which is pretty useful. And then if you press and hold the lower edge, it's going to reset to zero. Basically, um, create what is called a binding here or select the device for this slot. We'll uh, first add something that works with the vMix um, installation that we're already working on here. We can also give it a, a name. We'll do that in a moment. And then you see that uh, there's a number of choices. Um, for vMix, there's playlist control. Airfly Pro is our incredibly popular universal broadcast switcher panel and it's available with blue pill inside and an updated design and a new beautiful T-bar with a LED ring and a display. Blue pill technology makes this the perfect master for modular arrangements. Airfly Pro also has PDC controls for integrated convenient adjustments of your cameras and the OLED displays on the unit can show labels with support for worldwide glyphs via UTF-8. So if you want to go upscale you can even add an option for NKK buttons. Today is also a great day for everybody who wants to use vMix because in this video I'll go through the new vMix configuration for Airfly Pro and you'll get incredible out of the box functionality and for the first time you will also get an insight into how flexible and quickly you can mix devices on our new Blue Pill platform. I want to start out this video by talking about modularity. One of the features that you find on the Blue Pill platform is the ability to pull together multiple Skaho panels to one unified surface. So for instance, this Crosspoint 48 can snap onto the side of the Airfly Pro and make it a much bigger panel now. So with the Crosspoint 48, you would have direct access to 24 sources without holding down the shift key. 48 if you hold down the shift key. And Look at the reactor interface here. Currently, we only see the Airfly Pro, but if I press add panel and I type in, you can see that we have all these panels from our network and I type in cross point or point, then it finds cross point 48 V2 right here and I can select it and you see it will connect to the panel and I could now just identify that the panel is in fact here and a part of reactor's uh, sphere of panels it can manage. In this video, we will unplug it again gently because we are not going to take this into account and only focus on the Airfly Pro. And I promise you, this is going to be a pretty wild ride already. So look out for videos that update you on how you can expand your experience with the Airfly Pro with modular options like this. In our walkthrough of the Airfly Pro V3, let's start out with the T-Bar. So the T-Bar has this LED ring where you can color code the T-Bar's functionality and it also has a display instead of an LED bar that will show you the position of the transition. So you can basically put in all kinds of graphics but we have decided to make this very nice strength indicator on the LED screen associated with the T-Bar. So that's one of the great new features and the design upgrade that we are very enthusiastic about. We have also moved this uh, PTC section a little bit apart from buttons over here and you'll see why that makes a lot of sense because we have a concept defined that will make this section a generic section where you can attach small snippets of configurations that would control video routers and uh, playlists in vMix and so on very easily to these buttons up here. And you'll find those can be reused in other controller contexts in the Skaho universe. The same is true for this section, which is essentially like a second controller, a PDC WIS integrated on the Airfly. So those are some of the features you can look forward to. But if we start by the main things, what you see right here in the default mode, you basically have the program and preview, or should I say the active and preview row on your vMix right here. So you'll see that with this button press, I'm selecting sources on my preview bus and up here I can select them directly to the active output of vMix. So that's one thing. If I hold down the shift key, I can uh, do that for sources from 13 up to 24. And notice how the displays will show you the names of the sources coming directly from vMix. In fact, these labels does support UTF-8. It means you can put in Chinese, Japanese, um, 
Thai characters, you can put in special characters like from my own mother tongue, Danish. We have three special letters. All that is supported. And that's also really exciting in terms of how our controllers are more um, usable across the world with your local languages. So that's exciting upgrade we find in Reactor. So that's the basics, which is basically the um, program of active preview row for this vMix uh, configuration. This is a sort of master menu and we are currently on mix number one and mix number one means that here we have functions related to mix number one, but I can press this button on the side to basically change what we are dealing with here. You also see that the whole preview active bus is changed by the mix bus that we are selecting up in the corner. So um, I won't touch too much on that, but if we look at these features here, which are also depending on the selected mix bus, first of all, you find actually a redundant key right there. And there's a reason for that. That's because the configuration you see right here is also applicable to an Airfly, which is the, the little brother of the Airfly Pro. And uh, that, there's a good reason why then we have put this um, button two places. Um, going to the next um, mix row, you can see that we have um, here for mix bus number two, we have transition number that we can choose. We can go through the four different transitions and next to you can select what transition is being used as transition number one, fade, zoom, wipe. You can set the transition time. Again, notice if you haven't noticed these four way buttons, a special Skyhoy concept makes it possible to use a button as a way to change a value up and down. So you see, as I'm pressing and holding the sides of this button, it will actually change the value of the transition time. That's pretty flexible. So we can do that for all the four transitions. We can adjust type and the time. We have here preview and next item. These are associated with input sources that might be a slide. So if you want to go to next and preview slide on such an input, you basically press these buttons to do so. Let me see if I can uh, get these up. Yes, so here we have um, playback and pause. I think if we go back to this bus, uh, depending on which um, source we have here, for instance, uh, right now we are selected on input number seven and let me see that's supposed to be a source we could actually play back or um, I think number 11 uh, right here. Uh, yes, this one is a video and it's currently paused. So I can now play it back by pressing this one. You see it's now running and it has looping turned off. So now it's completed. But if I press looping on and I press it once again, you see now it is looping over this clip in vMix uh, as you would expect, of course. So that's another thing you get out of this utility row here. Then we have uh, auto transitions where we can uh, execute transition two, three, and four uh, as auto transitions by pushing those buttons. Let's just do that for one of them and see if that makes a difference. It does, that's nice. And um, that's basically what we see in this row of features associated with the active mix bus that we are managing with these buttons and these uh, buttons down here as well. There's one thing that you might wonder, what about this LED bar? This LED bar is actually a way you can color code your, uh, your, your channels, your sources. And uh, that gives me a chance to show you how Reactor works. So if we go into Reactor here, you see we have three things we can configure for the controller. There's a camera selector, there is a quick class selector, and the vMix inputs. There are 24 vMix inputs already defined. And what you can see is that this is just a basic list of numbers one through 24. But on the very right side, there's a field called color. And if I press this one, I can pick a color to identify my channel. So I pick red for this one and you see that red turns up over here. Let's just do that a few times. So that might be very useful for you that you can now color code your channel so easily in the reactor UI and have it show up on the controller. As you press the shift key, you can see that we could access sources further down and so on. You could also add a different source label here for these. Uh, so mm, let's try that. Let's see if that UTF-8 thing is true. Okay, guys, I'm trying my luck with this. Input number one, and hopefully this is the Japanese translation. So let's just see what happens if we put this into this field, right? And then we exit the field, 
and you see it turns up in the display. Isn't that amazing? And now I also want to type in some Danish stuff here. It says rød grød med fløde. This is a um, dessert in Danish. And you see that turns up here as well. It was a little bit long for the field, so let's just reduce it to just rød grød. And there you go. We have it with a special Danish character. So you can have that for any language. We have implemented a font that supports everything. And it automatically goes to that font, by the way, so that it will show it correctly. That's exciting. So I just wanted to show you that. Let's go back to the controller now. We have seen color coding and labels and so on and see what else we have. The bus menu is important because here you can do things with your buses. You, uh, if you are a vMix user, you know what that means. We have output 2, 3, and uh, 4, full screen 1 and 2 here. And uh, with these, we are able to assign um, sources. And one thing that we added is that apart from the sources you have already configured, which you can also uh, change with the shift key here, then um, you have additional two sources available on the far right side, which is multi-view and program. So picking, uh, pressing these buttons will uh, select those sources over to the selected output up here. So basically, once again, four-way buttons, by the way. I press the sides to browse forth and back in which uh, output it is that I'm, I'm delegating inputs to. And I can do that on these keys. On the second key over here, which is currently blank, we can select overlays, but that's only available if we go back, basically go back here and select mix number two. No, wait, go to mix number one, of course, then we can enter into the buses menu. And now um, what I'm doing is I'm selecting bus and it means that I basically substitute this with a new menu. For me to go back, I hold down shift, I get this back key and that brings me back to the master menu. So pressing bus again brings me into the, the next level of that menu. And now you can see that we have overlays here. So once again, I can delegate my sources to overlay number one. If I press this button, you see all these keys, they change over to purple. So we know that we are currently delegating uh, overlays. Otherwise, if we press over here, actually press on the lower edge, then you, you, you just select output um, as the delegation, overlay as delegation, output as delegation, and uh, so forth. So if we go over here, we are now delegating to overlay number one. We can even see it in the title up there. It says OVL1. And if I press the sides of this button, it's OVL2, 3, and 4. So I am able to change that around as I want and now I can delegate stuff. So maybe if you uh, look in the vMix interface, you can see the little one is changing around here as I am doing that. And also notice over here, we have three, four buttons. Yeah, I learned to count pretty late in my life. Um, we have four buttons with direct selection toggling off the last selected overlay source. And that's gonna be really useful because right now we have the deer that we can turn on and off here, you see? for the overlay, but now I want to go to overlay number three and I will select something from, yeah, let's just take this one. Yes, and then it pops up over here. So even though I'm now on overlay number three in my menu, I am still able to turn, uh, okay, maybe like that, I'm still able to turn overlay number one on and off. All right, so that's really, really useful that we have the uh, last selected overlay toggle functions on these keys, nice. Let's move on to the multi-viewer. We have destination that we can set here. We have layers we can set here. And once again, they are using the keys on this row for delegation. So we can basically pick our destinations as we want. We can even browse on the sides of the button here, depending a little bit on what you prefer. Either you browse forth and back or you select it directly with the keys. Hold down shift if you want something there like number 17. And if you go to multi-view layers, it's the same thing. The, the, the advantage of this is that you don't really need this row to change the multi-view destination. You can still change that on this button, but if you press the lower edge, you get to this delegation here. And then finally, we have the multi-view source, and <clears throat> that's the same thing. We can uh, press on the edges to go forth and back, or we can make a direct selection. And finally, we have the toggle function of this layer on and off right here on the final button in this section. Next up will be, if we go back, looking at shortcuts, okay? So if I press shortcuts, we now have access to actually 30 shortcuts because we have 
24 shortcuts on these keys and if I hold down shift we have access to another 12 so up to 24 and then we have additional six shortcuts right up there and you know what we can take take in the title and the text line one and two and show on the displays that's exactly what you see right here those labels are coming from vmix into the panel and shown on the displays we can even if you have it in thumbnail mode and um I think it has another mode, I can't remember the name, but actually what you see right here is a thumbnail that you set up in vMix and that will be translated into a black and white graphic on the key. But if that's useful to you, you could actually make small icons in vMix and it's automatically transported to the controller for your labels, if you will, for the shortcuts. So that's a pretty nifty little thing here for the shortcuts function. Let's go back, go to the audio menu and now that we are here in the audio menu, you can see we have access of um, adjustment of volume, um, balance, mute, solo, audio bus, and the master. So these five will change depending on the selected um, source. And uh, yeah, that's just me. Of course, we can only select sources that are allowed by vMix. So we have an availability knowledge in the panel that knows that these five sources won't have any parameters we can change but if we go to this one to this one to this one and so forth we have access to those parameters so what you see here if we uh, just stay with this one is that we can no wait let me see i just want to check if we have access to it i think number one we have access up there on the screen so you can see if i press and hold this side of the button i am adjusting the audio volume up and down if i press the upper edge then you usually do it in, in larger steps which is pretty useful and then if you press and hold the lower edge it's going to reset to zero so let's just turn it down a little bit Okay, that's nice. Uh, balance, same thing. Press the sides of this four-way button and you adjust the balance. You can also press and hold the lower edge to have it reset. Then it's currently muted, but now it's off. It's muted, now it's off. You see, solo. And also notice how this button, the delegation button, will light up depending on uh, what mode it is in. So even if you change to one of the other ones, you can see this is still yellow. It's just a little bit dim yellow, but it is yellow to indicate that solo is on. And then we have also here audio bus, on and off if the delegation is uh, the one or the other for this particular source. And then finally, depending or regardless of which audio input I'm selecting, we always have access to the master volume on the system. Once again, I can toggle fine and coarse mode on the upper edge of the four-way button to do this up and down. All those functions, the four-way buttons basically makes them encoders. The, the sides is like turning a knob like an encoder. This is an encoder knob which like clicks when you turn it. The four-way buttons does the same. You press the left and the right edge. It's like turning an encoder to uh, left or to the, right, to the right side. You can also press the encoders and that corresponds to when you um, press the upper edge of the button or press and hold the lower edge to reset. So all those things are kind of interchangeable between encoders and buttons, which means the Skahoi panels are so flexible that it's a so to a very large degree, it's a matter of your taste and what you prefer and what panel you have available. But it's so easy to um, basically move this around and, and uh, get a lot of utility out of any Skahoy panel in so many contexts. This, it's really exciting how this technology has manifested itself as such a, a flexible platform you can, you can build all these solutions on. I told you, you were in for a crazy ride with this controller. There's so much to cover and we're still not done yet. So one of the things that you probably have been looking forward to is a true engineering menu. And my engineers, they have thought about how to make this available to people. So if you press the shift key, the fade to black button, which otherwise would do fade to black, now becomes an engineering menu secret gateway. And when we press it, up here as I release the shift key. So it's it's not supposed to be easy. It's it's supposed to be a little bit hidden, right? And and for the 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 you know a secret only the invited few knows. It's a private party, right? So up here in the engineering menu, you can do a number of different things. First of all, and this is this is wild, you can select which VMAX number you are connected to. 
it means that this controller could in fact be connected to more than a single vmix system it could be connected to system two three four and so on and actually over in reactor if you add another device you find another vmix system and you add it here that would be number two three four and so on so the second thing you find is toggle keys for your streaming. So vMix has three streams and we can basically toggle on and off which of these streams will be enabled when you press the stream function over here. Just a quick note on the buttons here for stream, record and external. These buttons will light up red when they are active and you also need to press and hold the key to enable them or to turn them off again. All safety measures basically and I'm sure you will agree that this is pretty useful. In the engineering menu, we still have a function, the menu here, that if I press it, goes to page number one. There are basically two pages, so we have um, home and page number one. On page number one, we have uh, features like uh, putting the panel into sleep mode. We can do that by pressing this one, and in a few seconds, it will show you a nice little fireworks animation and cycle the display around and so on. And then we can wake it up here. We can also set the sleep time. Two hours is our default. After 10 minutes, it's gonna dim. And you can also adjust the brightness of the buttons, which is now on high, or you can turn it uh, all the way down here for the displays. Sorry, that was the displays. Over here we have the button. So now it's at full light, but you can also turn it down on the sides like that, all the way down to basically no colors at all in this one. I think if I press and hold, we should go back to, no, it doesn't reset, but medium is our standard setting for most panels. In a dark room, you usually run it on a pretty low setting because you don't want to contaminate your eyes with a lot of light from the buttons here. So far, so good. I think we have covered a lot of really awesome features in this panel. If we want to exit the engineering menu, you just press the, press the fade to black button and you get back to your normal default. We have another two very exciting topics to cover in this video, which is the quick class entries and also the camera selector. But before that, I want to show you how we can rearrange the inputs. And you already saw the input selector right here, which is uh, available. We, we can rearrange the interface a little bit if we want access to more. And it's possible to drag them around to rearrange the order of them on the panel. So let's say that I want to take this the, the first input source and, and place as number six in on this control. I can basically drag it down to this location, release it, and on the panel you'll see that this is rearranging immediately. So um, that's what you can do in these constant sets, which are ways that you can rearrange um, things inside of Reactor. And actually it's the same thing that happens when we make a camera selector. So now as we add cameras, we don't need to care about the order of adding the cameras. So you see, we have already made a network search here on the network for things that are available to us by basically picking them uh, by pressing select over here. So I'll select this uh, IDA PDC camera. So uh, as I do that, you can see that it's basically installing a device core, it's connecting to the camera, and there you go, it's now connected. It's also added over here. And what you wanna see now is how this could be used for camera control. So this is what this button does, with only is a reference to the PTC WIS configuration that we can show. And now as I press this button, you see that these six buttons and this section, you can't see that, is now uh, available to us. So if I press ADA PTC, you see that I'm now able to do something up here. We have joystick sensitivity. If I am browsing a little bit, you also see we have access to certain features inside the camera like uh, contrast and uh, exposure, which we can change to something else like manual, shutter priority and so on and so forth. We even, if we press the lower edge of this button, as on a PDC OS, we can access presets that we can recall on this camera. Let's add another camera. So I want to press this button once again, and then I'll do this manually this time. So I'll just search for Canon CRN300. I'll add it here. You see the, the connection to it is installed down here, but we are missing the IP address because we did this manually this time, but that's not an issue. So we'll just quickly type in the IP address of this camera. And that's basically done with this now. I press save here and uh, we can uh, shut this down and hey, it's connected already and it's added up here and it is on my camera selector. So I can now select that one. And that's the camera I just added. So if I press the joystick pad, you'll see that I can operate the camera. That's really, really, really neat. This is 
pretty good for what it is. This is, we call it a convenience joystick because it's not supposed to be as precise as a Hall Effect joystick you'll find on our PDC controllers, but it's pretty useful anyway. And I can show you that presets are available to us as well. So if we store this position as a preset and move to a different position here, and we can use the zoom rocker also to zoom in and out. I will just store this one. Okay, so now I can recall this, this preset, go to this preset. There you go, all from your Airfly Pro. That's pretty neat. And as I mentioned before, we can even rearrange how they appear on the camera selector here. So if I drag this to be below the other one, you'll see that they are swapping around on the controller to manage the order that you like. Quick Class is another pretty nice feature. It allows you to add in snippets of stuff on the row of buttons at the very top here. So we create a new one and uh, then we can basically um, create what is called a binding here or select the device for this slot. We'll uh, first add something that works with the vMix uh, um, installation that we're already working on here. So <clears throat> we can also give it a, a name. We'll do that in a moment. And then you see that the, there's a number of choices. Um, for vMix, there's playlist control. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that in this menu, you now see there's an option here, vMix version. That's the name coming from here. I'll just type in playlist and it changes its name. If I press this, you now see that I have access to um, something called playlist on and off. The quick class snippet we just added to the controller basically gives us access to managing the playlists in vMix. So it's an additional feature that we can just swoop in by using this simple interface in Reactor on the home screen. So let's see what it does. We can basically select between three play playlists that we have available to us and you see in the interface as well how it's changing. Now let's go to the default and we start playing back this playlist. And as we do that, I can now operate the next and the preview uh, previous uh, functions here. So I can basically progress my playlist as I desire until I'm at the end and it's now off again and I can change to a different playlist if I want. You also see how as I'm playing it back, I can't change my playlists anymore. Those are locked down as the little icon indicates in the display. I can go to the next one and so on until it turns off again. So that's the snippet for vMix, a quick class snippet that we added. I want to add something for a different device. So for instance, we can now add a new entry here. We can um, uh, just keep this a, uh, an empty slot and then we could go um, basically pick a video router that we want to operate. Uh, with here. But um, to do that, we'll add a device over here, basically find the video router on our network. And I know that we have like a smart view video hub here. So I'll just select this. And there we go. So it's selected, it's connected as well. That's super cool. I can now go in here and you'll see that we have the video hub we can attach ourselves to. And then it even selected my configuration for this one as well. So I want to go back basically press shift, go back, and we are now here and it says quick class video hub 12x. So I know it by a different name. The 12 by 12 is um, the name it goes under. So I just change that and I select this one. So what you have right now is first of all, the green indication means we are connected. So that's a pretty useful little uh, thing. Then on the lower edge here, you can go between either recalling presets on your video hub or you can select inputs for the selected output. So currently the selected output is called overflow mo. Um, the input or output selection is managed by the um, by basically toggling on the upper side of this four way button. So I'm currently now selecting my outputs and I could select output for Teradec cube. And then if I press here, then we go back and the input that is routed to the output called Teradec Cube is now possible to manage here. And if I want to go to additional pages of inputs, because I have up to uh, 20 of these apparently, I can just do that on the sides with this uh, button uh, right here. Actually, we do only have 12. Um, so the additional inputs is um, uh, something that's probably in the default constant set of this configuration. But these inputs, uh, names again taken out of the video router, is uh, possible to route around. And then I can again go here if I want to recall presets. Going here to the back, 
I'm now back to my main menu where I can use this little section either to control the vMix configuration or with these two added quick class configurations or snippets, we have added additional functionality onto our Airfly Pro just with a snap of the fingers. So that's the Airfly Pro vMix configuration, pretty crazy and wild. Much of this is also available on the Airfly controller, which is the little brother to this one with less displays. So less convenience, but a different price tag. And the Airfly Pro is uh, really, really showcased nicely here and the, the Blue Pill and Reactor platform because you can just see how deep we can go, how much we can squeeze in in very clever thought out menus and so on on these products. So that's really, really exciting. And uh, we can't wait to hear how you like that, how you respond to that, what ideas you might have for new quick class configurations we could add and so on. I want to invite you to follow us on social media, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, our newsletter. If you want to stay in touch with all the new things that we push out, that's the way you should definitely go. Otherwise, I'm looking forward to finally seeing you at some trade show near you. Um, we are so excited to, to get out and meet people again after this long time we have been locked down. But you can see that we have not uh, wasted our time. We have developed this new platform and a lot of new variations and upgrades to our products.